trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore. And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the Good evening, everyone. It's uh, good to be in God's house tonight and uh, thank the Lord for another opportunity to be here. And I uh, want to welcome everyone that's watching tonight online. And uh, we want to be much in prayer for the service tonight. We'll just try our best to follow the Lord and uh, do what God has uh, called us and uh, what he leads us to do this evening. Uh, a couple of uh, announcements uh, that we want to make mention of this evening. Uh, before we get into our prayer request, uh, let's remember that um, the uh, backpack ministry, that's going to be on July the 20th. And uh, the items that are, are in need of, of the backpacks are uh, notebooks, Kleenexes, uh, pencils, and hand sanitizers. And if you'd like to participate in, in that, uh, you're more welcome to leave your items in the fellowship hall. So remember that. Uh, that's upcoming on July the 20th. Be much in prayer for that ministry. Uh, that opportunity uh, that we've got to be able to share the love of Christ uh, with this community. So remember that. Uh, also, uh, WMU is also uh, continuing to encourage us, and I encourage you as well, uh, and every believer, uh, to let's continue to be much in prayer uh, for our nation. Let's remember our country, remember our leaders of our country. Uh, and let's continue to pray for... Um, uh, that, that God would uh, just help us uh, through these times that we're facing and what we're going through, uh, times of uh, uncertainty. So let's remember that as we pray and uh, take time each and every day, if you can, to just pray for this and remember uh, our country when you pray. Also, uh, let's remember uh, Resurrection Celebration. That's going to be uh, on uh, Sunday, July the 12th, and that'll be at 930 in the Fellowship Hall and... Um, that's going to be for the children, and they're going to be having breakfast and an Easter story, and uh, they're uh, going to have uh, treats and goodies, different things like that, uh, where they weren't able to have uh, their Easter egg hunt this year and have a get-together. They're going to try and do something there coming up on July the 12th. So remember that. Uh, July the 26th through the 30th, that'll be our Vacation Bible School. Uh, please continue to be much in prayer for Vacation Bible School. If you'd like to... Uh, sign up and work. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet in the back in the vestibule on your way out this evening. Uh, you can sign up. Uh, also, if you have any questions, you can also contact and see uh, Mason Simpson for that. Uh, Deacon of the Month is uh, Kyle Richardson, and his number is there 
uh, in the bulletin, so remember that. Uh, Connor Roberts will have announcements coming up on Sunday morning, uh, so remember Connor uh, as you pray, and um, continue to remember uh, our prayer request, our prayer list tonight. Uh, let's continue to remember Brother Ronnie Robbins in prayer as he's continuing to recover uh, from uh, his back surgery. Continue to remember Brother Roy Wright when we pray. Uh, let's remember Walter Seymour. I remember Steve and Wanda. Steve has a brain, brain tumor. We've been praying for him. Uh, they're friends of Jill Beeson, so remember them tonight. Uh, remember uh, Brooks Weeks in prayer. Uh, remember, continue to pray as we mentioned already, our nation, our leaders. Remember the homeless. Remember the hungry. Uh, remember the lost, most of all, this evening. I know we all got family members and friends, uh, co-workers, uh, even uh, some people that may be watching and viewing our services online that's lost that don't know the Lord as their Savior. So let's be much in prayer for them that God will give them opportunity uh, to be saved and accept him as their Savior. Remember Brother Clarence Robbins tonight when you pray. Uh, continue to remember Joan Burge. Remember Tim Knight in prayer. Uh, let's continue to remember our um, uh, Reed Stowers when we pray. Let's continue to remember Curly Bates. Uh, family, uh, I believe they're uh, receiving friends this evening, uh, so remember them in prayer. Let's remember Pat Brooks, uh, remember uh, that family in prayer as well. Uh, let's continue to remember that uh, friend of Steve's, uh, Pat is, and he had requested prayer for him on Sunday morning, uh, so remember that. Remember Kathy uh, Acuff family. Uh, remember uh, James Sawlings. I talked to James there last week and this week, and um, they had to uh, reschedule James's test. Uh, he had that annual test coming up to check on uh, check for cancer, and so they've moved that to the 30th of July. So be much in prayer for James. Remember him. Remember Amy and Jonathan uh, when you pray. So uh, let's continue to remember them. Remember our shut-ins tonight that's in our church family. Remember our elderly when we pray. Uh, is there any other prayer requests that we need to make mention of uh, tonight before we go to the Lord in prayer. Remember this. Remember uh, Strawberry Archer. Remember the Archer family in prayer. Let's continue. Remember the media ministry tonight in prayer. All right. Uh, let's, uh, let's continue to pray for revival uh, in our church. Remember our church as we pray. I know revival... We need revival as individuals. We need revival as a church body. Uh, we need it as a uh, country. We need it throughout our community and our state. So remember that as you pray. And as Brother David made mention there last Wednesday night, and I, I believe it's so true, let's remember our church, remember all the other churches. We believe we are in a time of uh, rebuilding. Uh, so uh, let's remember that as we pray and uh, just continue to pray that there would be a desire uh, for God's word uh, and people's lives and not only that but uh, to have a relationship with the Lord so remember those uh, things when you pray tonight let's remember the summer jam that's coming up that'll be July the 25th uh, and that'll be uh, there's going to be several groups that's going to be singing there so uh, gospel groups so remember remember that when you pray tonight anybody else All right, if no one else has anything, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for tonight. And God, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, for the many requests that, Father, we've made mention of here this evening. And, Father, we just ask and pray that, God, you will be with each and every one. We pray that, God, you would bless the service tonight. Lord, we pray that, God, you would speak to our hearts tonight. And, Lord, we would, uh, Lord, just get out of your word this evening that, Father, what you would have. Uh, for us Lord and we know that Father we stand uh, in need and Father we know that you're able to take care of that tonight and we thank you Lord and we pray that Father Lord you'll be with our teachers downstairs be with our youth be with our children God we pray that you'll bless their service this evening Father in a time as they learn as they continue to grow in, in your word Father and Lord we just pray as a church that God you would help us Lord to continue to grow in your Holy Spirit grow in grace and knowledge and wisdom and understanding of you. We pray that, Father, Lord, you would continue, Father, to help our church. Lord, we pray for revival, Lord, in our church, and we pray for revival as individuals. And we pray, Father, for that revival throughout our community, throughout our state, throughout our country, and throughout this world, that, Father, lost people would come to the saving knowledge and the understanding of you. We pray, Lord, that you bless all these things that we ask in your name tonight. 
Amen. serve a God tonight that's faithful don't we and uh, he is there all the time I'm thankful the word says that he will never leave us nor forsake us and uh, he'll be with us always even until the very end I'm glad that we have that promise tonight uh, from Jesus our Savior uh, it's good to be in God's house as we've said already this evening if you have your Bibles and uh, would like to turn with us we're going to be reading tonight from the book of first Kings 1 uh, Kings chapter 19, 
is uh, where we're going to begin reading. And uh, as uh, we begin to pray there uh, for the message tonight, the Lord had laid this scripture on our heart. And uh, some of uh, the fav- my favorite scripture through the Bible that uh, I-, I enjoy reading and studying and uh, is uh, in the book of Kings and, and about Elijah and Elisha and uh, how God had used them mightily and, and some of the things that God shows us uh, just in those scripture. And uh, tonight as we're going to look there in uh, chapter 19 of the book of First Kings um, to give a little bit of a, a background here before you go to the 19th chapter, when you read uh, chapter 18 of the book of First Kings, we know that the 18th chapter of the book of First Kings is it talks about the uh, where Elijah went up to Mount Carmel, and the Bible teaches us and tells us that there was a uh, contest up there, and it said that Elijah came to all the people, and uh, he asked him, and he said to this, asked him this question. He said, "How long halt ye?" between two opinions he said if the lord be god then serve him or if baal be god then serve and follow him and we know the story uh, about the bible teaches us it says that elijah told him he said go ahead let's build an altar and it said that they laid the sacrifice the bullock on the altar and it said that elijah let them go ahead first and call on their god And it said that they spent almost all day calling on their God, but yet there was no answer uh, from Baal. Uh, But we know that Elijah said finally he had had enough, and he said, all right. And it said that he repaired the altar, and it said that he even went and he took, uh, I believe, uh, buckets of water, and he, he... put the buckets of water on the altar and soaked the bullock, soaked the altar. And then he called upon the name of the Lord. And the Bible said that God answered by fire that day. And not only that, but Elijah did something else. It said that he took them down to the brook. And down at the brook, he took the prophets of Baal, and he slew them there that day. And the Bible said that Ahab was uh, extremely mad uh, and upset. He went back, and he told Jezebel, his wife, all that had happened. And so we're going to pick up here in chapter 19, verse number 1. And it says, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. So you think about that for just a minute. We're going to stop right there. Uh, Elijah had just seen God move in a mighty way. Uh, He had just seen God answer by fire. And not only did God answer by fire, but he consumed the whole altar and the sacrifice. And the Bible said that the fire even licked up the water that was in the trench around the altar of sacrifice. Uh, So God moved in a mighty way and the people that were there on top of Mount Carmel, they knew and they believed that the Lord was the true God. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Uh, Elijah had just experienced a great victory of God that day. Uh, Now, have you ever been there this evening? Has God ever moved mightily in your life and you've experienced man a great victory and it just seems like God's come through he's answered a prayer he's done something great in your life and my friend you've been going about your business and man you're on the mountaintop right and it just seems like not long though after the victory not long are you on the mountain and and man just things are going great and you're on this high because God has moved in a mighty way and come through yet who comes by your way it's the 
the enemy, isn't it? Old Satan comes by your way. And my friend, what happened? That's exactly what happened to Elijah. Uh, my friend, the Bible said that Jezebel uh, sent a message down to Elijah and said, all right, Elijah, here's what's going to happen. Uh, she says, if God, uh, let the gods, uh, talking about the gods of Baal, the false gods, uh, do to me and more also, if I might, if I not make thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow. So what Jezebel did, she sent a message to Elijah saying, hey, I'm going to slay you. I'm going to kill you just like you killed the prophets of Baal. I'm going to get rid of you, you, the prophet of the Most High God. Amen? Uh, so what happened to Elijah? He got scared, didn't he? The human nature, the human part of him, he was afraid. He was fearful for his life. And the Bible said when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. He was scared for his life. He was in fear for his life. And my friends, so he began to run. Uh, he was trying to save himself. And we find here verse number 4, it says, But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. Elijah was ready to quit, wasn't he? Hey man, he was ready. He was ready just to die. And he said that he went himself. He left his servant down in Beersheba, but himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. And when he came into the wilderness and he got to this juniper tree, he sat down. He began to pray and ask the Lord that God would just take his life. He said, "It's enough. I'm done, Lord. I'm over it. Just take me. I'm no better than what my fathers were." Have you ever been there? Maybe have you ever been to the place in your life where you just say, I'm ready just to give up, just to quit. Amen? Uh, I just can't go no farther. I can't go no more. Uh, what has come on me, what this burden that's been laid on me, or, or what's come up in my life, this circumstance, this situation. Man, I was on a high. I was doing good. And man, God had answered this prayer, and I'd got this victory in my life. But man, I'm blindsided by the enemy, and now this has come into my life. Lord, I just don't want to do it. I don't want to go through it. I don't want to deal with it. It's it's just enough. It's over. I'm ready just to quit. Lay down. That's where Elijah was. Now you say, how could a man of God, a prophet, a man of God, one that went and he prayed, and my friend, God heard his prayer. He prayed, and the Bible said for three and a half years, God heard and answered his prayer, and man, he shut up the windows of heaven. That there was no rain, there was no dew that fell on the earth for three and a half years for the prayer of Elijah. Why? Because Elijah loved the Lord, and he loved his people. He loved the people of Judah. He loved the people of Israel, and my friend, he loved them so much that he prayed to God that God would get their attention because they had gone astray. They began to follow and serve the gods that Ahab and Jezebel served. The false gods, the false gods of Baal. And they became prophets of Baal. They were following the false god and no longer serving the one true God. And Elijah loved them so much he didn't want to see them go down this road. So he prayed that God would get their attention. That God would prove himself to them that they would turn from serving the false God and back to the one true God. We're talking about a mighty man of God. We're talking about a man of God, my friend, that called down fire from heaven and that God answered Elijah's prayer that day on Mount Carmel and he answered by fire. We're talking about someone that had a lot of faith and trust in the Lord but yet he got to a place and a point in his life he was ready to quit. He was ready to sit down. He was ready to lay down and die and give up. But I believe God had something else in store, don't you? God had something else in store for Elijah. And listen, my friend, if you're there tonight, and you may be watching tonight, uh, and you may be there this evening, you may be ready just to give up. You may be ready just to lay down, just to quit on the Lord. You may be ready just to die, just to go on, whatever it is, my friend. But I'm going to tell you something. God's got something greater in store for you. 
And God's got something else in store for you, just like he did Elijah. So the Bible says here, verse number 5, and it says, As he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. So as Elijah got down there and sat under the juniper tree, as he prayed and asked the Lord just to take his life, what happened? He fell asleep. He fell asleep down there under the juniper tree. You know what? Maybe Elijah, all he needed was just a little rest, right? Uh, he maybe just needed a little rest. And the Bible said that he lay and he slept under the juniper tree. Behold, then an angel touched him and said, Arise and eat. And the Bible said, verse 6, and it said, He looked, and behold, there was a cake bacon on the coals and a cruise of water at his head, and he did eat and drink and laid down again. You know what God did? God provided a meal. He provided substance for Elijah while he was in the wilderness. God sustained him. He satisfied him. He took care of him. He gave him, the Bible said there, a cake bacon on the coal. He gave him bread to eat. And water to drink. Listen my friend when you're going through a wilderness time and you're to a point in your life where you're ready just to quit and lay down my friend on the Lord. Listen God's going to take care of you. Do you know that? God's going to provide for you just as he did Elijah. He gave Elijah exactly what he needed. He gave him some bread he gave him some water. You know what that represents in God's word spiritually tonight? That represents the very word of God. The very bread of life, the bread from heaven. You know what the water represents, my friend? The water represents that refreshing touch, that refreshness of the Holy Spirit of God. And listen, my friend, when you get to a point where you think you can't go any farther or you can't go no more for the Lord, listen, my friend, God has got what you need. He will give you the refreshing touch of the Holy Spirit. He will give you His Word that will sustain you and give you enough meat Something, my friend, that will feed your hungry and thirsty soul for Him. God will provide for you in a wilderness, just as He did Elijah. You think about, my friend, God, this is the same man that God told Elijah. He said, here's what I want you to do, Elijah. He said, I want you to go and I want you to sit by the brook. And the Bible said that Elijah sat by that brook. And what did God do? It said that God commanded the very ravens of the air to drop him meat in the evening to eat. And he drank the water from the brook. Now listen, there come a time because of the drought and because of the famine, because there had been no rain, there had been no dew, because God shut up to heaven because of the prayer of Elijah that the brook dried up. But you know what? God still provided. Because God told Elijah, he said, here's what I want you to do, Elijah. I want you to go down to Zarephath. He said, and there's a little widow woman down there that I've commanded, and she's going to sustain you. And the Bible said that he got down there to the gate of the city and he saw the woman that God showed him the woman and it said that she was out gathering sticks and he called to her and said, Woman, what are you doing? She said, I'm out here gathering sticks that I'm going to go back to my house and I'm going to bake me and my son a cake and we're going to eat it and we're going to die because we don't have any more meal in the barrel and we ain't got but just a little bit of oil left in the cruise. But you know what Elijah told her? He said, Listen, he said, Go and fix me a cake first. And now you know what? You th you, it took a lot of faith in this woman, didn't it? It took a lot of faith of this woman that she would go and do that for this man of God. And my friend, when she did that, you know what God did? He provided not only for her and her son, but he provided for Elijah. And the Bible said that when she did this, that she went back and it said that the meal, the barrel of meal, it didn't run empty, no. And it said that the cruise of oil it didn't run dry the whole time of the famine and my friend that was in the land God provided that day for them he'll provide for you and I as well he went on to say this there in verse number 7 what happened it said and the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee did you know that the journey that you and I are on, it's too great for you and I as individuals to try to make it on our own. Do you know that? We need the very help of the Lord. 
We need what Elijah got. He ate the cake, he ate the bread, and he drank the water. He had the Word of God and he had the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? Is what that represented. And that's exactly what you and I need on this journey. Because the journey is too great for you and for me on our own. We need the Lord, but we need God's Word. We need God's Word every step of the way, and we need the Holy Spirit every step of the way. Amen? And he went on to say this, And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto, the, unto Horeb, the mount of God. That meat and drink was strength for Elijah. God's Word and His Holy Spirit is strength for you and I day in and day out. And it said that he went to the Mount of Horeb. That was the same mountain that God came down and made himself known to the children of Israel. That was the same mountain that God came to Moses that Moses met the Lord on and he gave him the Ten Commandments. He gave him not only the Ten Commandments on that mountain, but he gave him the blueprint to the tabernacle. He gave him the whole Levitical law that day, the mountain of God. Verse 9 says, And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said, unto him what doest thou here Elijah so after he come out of the wilderness Elijah goes straight into a cave and the Lord comes to him and says what are you doing here Elijah what are you doing down here in this cave and it said this Elijah said I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts for the children of Israel I have and have forsaken thy covenant thrown down thine altars and slain thy prophets with the sword and I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. The Lord said, verse 11, And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind rent the mountains, and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And it said, And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. But after the fire, a still, small voice. Have you ever heard that still, small voice? That just comes to you, my friend, and it speaks. And when that still, small voice speaks to your heart, he speaks peace. He speaks confidence. He speaks trust. He gives you exactly what you need at that moment and that time that you're going through. No doubt Elijah was probably still scared. He was probably still, still fearful. He may have got past the fact of wanting to lay down and quit and ready to die, but he was still afraid because the Bible said that he went and into the cave. Listen, my friend, God came by and he spoke to Elijah in a still, small voice. And God had something he wanted Elijah to do. God was not done with Elijah. God's not done with you and I, amen? No matter how far you get tonight, if you find yourself in a cave, you find yourself in the wilderness, you find yourself under, in, the, in, in the wilderness under a juniper tree ready just to give up and quit and die, God's not done with you. God's got something else for you to do in this walk of life. Verse 13 says this, And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering end of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him again and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altar, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. Do you notice something here? You know what God tells Elijah? Here's how he responds and here's how he answers Elijah after Elijah's telling God all these things that he already knows. Verse 15 said, And the Lord said unto him, Go, go. Return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when thou comest, anoint Hazel the, to be king over Syria, and Jehu the son of Nimshi shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha the son of Shaphat of Abel-Meholoth, 
shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. Ye, and it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Hazel shall Jehu slay, and him that escapeth the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet I have left me seven thousand in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which shall not kiss him. God had a plan for Elijah. He still had one more journey, one more mission, one more uh, mission that he had to go on for the Lord. And that was to go not only uh, to anoint uh, uh, the, the king of Syria, but to anoint the king of Israel. And my friend, he was going to go down, he was going to meet Elisha, who was going to soon take his place as the prophet of Israel, as God's called and chosen man. And you know how Elijah played the pity party, didn't he? And he said, Lord, I'm the only one left. Me alone. I'm the only one. He said, all of Israel, they've, they've forsaken your covenant. They've thrown down your altars. They've followed Baal. He said, I'm the only one. You know what God did? God reminded Elijah of something. He said, Elijah, listen, I've got 7,000. 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal and have not so as much kissed him. Listen, sometimes we get down on ourselves. Sometimes we think we're the only one out here trying to serve and do for the Lord. Listen, God's got plenty out there trying to serve and do for him. And when you get to a point, a place in your life where you say, Lord, I'm just ready to quit, I'm ready to give up. Listen, my friend, whatever it comes, that's come up in your life that's got you to that point, I want you just to trust in the Lord. I want you just to trust in the Lord and know that God's going to be with you through that wilderness. He's going to sustain you. He's going to give you his word. He's going to give you the Holy Spirit. Not only that, God's going to come by and he's going to speak to your heart. And when he speaks in that still, small voice, he speaks peace. He speaks confidence. He speaks trust. And my friend, he speaks encouragement. And he gives us direction. And just as he did for Elijah, he had one more mission for him. He said, Elijah, here's what I want you to do. Do you see that word? I highlighted it in my Bible years ago when God showed it to me. The word go. I want you to go, Elijah. And that's exactly what you and I that have been saved and called by God's grace, that's what we need to be doing. We need to be going. We need to be going and telling a lost and dying world about Jesus Christ, about what he's done for us on the cross of Calvary, about a change and a difference he's made in your life and mine. Tell a lost world about a Savior that can change their lives as well. Amen? Amen. Let's pray tonight. Father, we thank you, Lord, once again for your word. We thank you that, Father, Lord, there's been times in our life where, God, you brought great victory. And, Lord, we've been on a mountaintop. But, Father, Lord, it seems like we get blindsided, Father, by the enemy. Or something comes up in this life, this walk of life, that, Lord, is unexpected. God, we thank you, Lord, that even sometimes, that, Lord, we may get to the very place and point in our lives that father maybe we've gotten so low or maybe there's someone tonight that's watching or viewing that father they're as low as they can get tonight in their life and father i pray tonight lord just that maybe they're to that point where they are ready to give up on you lord maybe they've got to a place that lord they're just ready to die they're ready to quit they're ready to lay down and not go any farther i pray tonight father that lord you would come by their way and, Father, if they're in the wilderness tonight, Lord, sitting down there under that juniper tree, God, I pray that you would come by their way, Father, and just give them your word. And, Lord, give them your Holy Spirit and speak to them. God, encourage them and strengthen them. Remind them that, God, you're not finished with them yet. And you're not done. And that, God, they've still got a mission. They've still got a calling. They have still are on this walk of life and on this earth for a purpose, and that is to go into a lost and dying world and to tell others about your, your son Jesus, our Savior and our Lord. We love you, we thank you, and we praise you. And all this we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. As we stand tonight, as they sing, a time of invitation. If you feel the need to come and pray this evening, uh, we just encourage you to do so. We want you just to mind the Lord as we stand. Four forty seven, trust and obey. When we walk with the
say this tonight there um, and to those people that are, are viewing and, and are home tonight uh, I've not said this in a while but if uh, you're watching tonight and, and you you would are in need of prayer uh, on our web page on our website you can go and you can send uh, us a request there a prayer request and uh, we'll get in touch with you we'll contact you and we'll pray for you so uh, we encourage you tonight, if you feel uh, led to do that, we encourage you to do so, and we'd love to be able to get in contact with you and, and pray with you and pray for you. So I just wanted to say that, felt led to say that this evening there before we dismiss. But uh, I thank the Lord for another opportunity he's given us to be in God's house tonight. And uh, I'm so thankful for each and every one that's come to be a part. Uh, thank for all those that are watching tonight, and uh, I know this, um, uh, there ever time was a time I think that uh, we need the Lord it's now we need the Lord and uh, we need him in our lives and I just pray tonight that we'll continue to pray as a church uh, church let's pray for our uh, loss let's pray for our children our grandchildren uh, we've got a lot to pray for uh, let's pray for our community tonight uh, when we pray and let's continue to remember all the elderly and the shut-ins those that are sick that are in our church family Please remember them and pray for them tonight. Does anybody have a testimony or a word or anything on your heart you feel led to say this evening before we dismiss? It certainly has been good to be here tonight. I do appreciate everybody. If no one else has anything, don't forget, be much in prayer for Sunday morning service. Um, Brother Mike Viles will be here. He'll be preaching. Uh, so be much in prayer for Brother Mike. Remember him as you pray this upcoming week. Uh, don't forget Sunday school will be at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, and we do encourage everybody that can and will come be a part of Sunday school. Uh, we have classes for all ages, and we have wonderful Sunday school teachers. So uh, I believe Sunday school is a great, uh, great time, and I believe Sunday school helps grow our church, and it helps build our church, and it helps us uh, as individuals to grow in more grace and knowledge and understanding and wisdom of God's word so helps us to grow in our relationship with each other helps us to grow in our relationship with the Lord so we encourage everybody that can and will come be a part of Sunday school with us that starts at 10 o'clock well don't forget uh, the upcoming announcements and uh, remember all of our prayer requests and remember all those that have passed away and lost loved ones this week uh, in our church so remember that uh, if no one else has anything, I'm going to ask Brother David if he would dismiss us this evening in prayer.